Success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. Being on a rap game has resulted in various outcomes for the cast throughout the years. That was my main reason and motivation for making these videos in the first place. Seeing a rerun of an old episode made me wonder, dang, what are they all up to right now? But what about the three kids that only appeared on the show for a few minutes or just an episode? It's one thing to be able to build the fan base after being on the show for a full season, but I'm sure it's even more difficult with just a quick appearance. From entrepreneurs and moguls to brand ambassadors for NBA teams. Today we'll dive into where Keyshawn, Mini Barbie, and Little Richie are today and what they're up to now. But like always, we'll have to take a look back to see some of their journey before their time on Lifetime's popular show, The Rap Game. Yo, this will be our final video of the rap game series, so we appreciate everybody that's been riding with us on this journey from the beginning. If you end up liking the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe down below. But without further ado, though, let's go ahead and blast right back into this. Keyshawn was born in Zone 6 in Atlanta, Georgia, growing up in a struggle with only his mom at first because his pops was locked up before he was even born. His mom and grandmother helped pull together and raise him until his pops got out of jail, something that I'm sure was difficult for everyone involved in his early days to give him something to do he used to play sports his main ones being baseball and football and he did that all the way up until around the ninth grade where his life seen a shift in more than a couple ways he had started rapping playing around around the age of nine but he really started taking it serious around the ninth grade when he would get into some different circles and start making connections with some friends that had their own studios so they would get together and start recording so he started dropping mixtapes and videos and that's when JD ended up reaching out back when the rap game season three was filming Jermaine Dupree was looking for a kid to join the show mid-season Keyshawn wasn't really sure how he could fit into the show mid-season but he still was determined to get on it so he he submitted some of his rap videos and he actually ended up being on the show. Jermaine Dupree told him that if he won the he would get to remain on the show. Which because Keyshawn didn't see himself as necessarily a battle rapper but just a song maker it was a little difficult for him to overcome battling five different kids at one time. On the episode he battled Dietranana, Nova, King Roscoe, Flage, and Tali where they rap battled in the ring. He gave his best shot but they eventually beat him ending his short stint on the show. He left and kept pushing, turning his clique around him into a squad that they called BMV, making new music, and even doing a song with popular artist Huncho. So he's definitely still making strides to becoming a rapper till this day, still grinding for his dreams. He graduated at age 17, which allowed him to be able to focus even more on his music. There's no telling really where he could take it from here. Now up next we got Mini Barbie, whose unbelievable rise after the show was amazing to find out after researching her childhood. Born on 420 in 2003. Minaria White, aka Minnie Barbie, was also born in Atlanta, Georgia, and unfortunately had similar circumstances to Keyshawn growing up, with her father getting locked up while she was a baby, causing her mother to have to take on the responsibility of raising her on her own. Luckily, she had to help a family, of course, like Minnie Barbie's grandma. Minnie Barbie showed potential very early in music and was even accounted to singing Beyonce's irreplaceable word for word alongside her mother when she was just a child. By seven, she would start rapping and by nine, she already had multiple songs with millions of views on YouTube and showing a real skill and talent to be relatable that helped her grow multiple social media platforms. And with the rise of her online presence, that helped her land shows at local birthday parties. And then eventually she amassed over 40,000 followers on IG along with her YouTube success before eventually losing that same IG page after getting hacked. But none of this stopped her grind though. She just kept getting back up and dusting herself off, eventually getting the attention of another local Jermaine Dupree who wanted to get her on his show. Episode 1 of season 2, the 7 contestants pulled up with 2 being told that they were going to be sent home. Ironically, the final 2 came down to the winner of the show, Monty and Minnie Barbie. It seemed like Jermaine Dupree was really struggling between the 2 but he eventually chose Monty to stay for now and it ended up in Minnie Barbie leaving the show. Instead of dwelling on the loss, showing real mental fortitude, she would hit the ground quick and keep running, building up 
of her fan base online, specializing in Instagram, and now she's currently sitting over 1.3 million followers online, selling her own lines of hair and clothing wear, and using her likeness to become an online entrepreneur, providing a lifestyle for her and her family she once believed rap would provide. She has dropped music sometimes throughout the years, but it seems like overall she's found her lane, and you can't be mad that she's sticking with it. Last but not least, we got Little Richie, the young rapper that grew up under his family's record label, Let's Ride Records. Richie Porter Jr., aka Lil Richie, was born in Charlotte, NC. His mom and pops was trying to build an empire, no pun intended, even though his mother on the show said people called her Cookie in real life. Growing up, Richie started off his love for music in the church while he was helping sing in the choir. Richie grew up with other brothers and sisters, but his two brothers and him joined together to form a group early called the 3PB or the Three Porter Boys. Richie said he started taking rap serious around age 10, doing shows and putting out videos, also crossing paths with other castmates. So his team thought it was only right for Richie to get on the rap game as well. So his team set it up for him according to Little Richie's account of how he got on the show. So at the age of 13, he was set to appear on season 5, the final season of the rap game. When six contestants pulled up day one, Tyler, Sire, Naya, Eli, Amaya, and Richie, they immediately knew someone was going home. They got put through rap battles from the very beginning. The rap game always does this thing where they have the families come in and then one family doesn't have a room to sleep in. Richie would later say that that was just for the cameras and just for the show and that him and his mom actually had the biggest room in the house. But through this season, they had to battle a lot, which ended up being the reason that left little Richie as the odd band out and sent home in the first episode. His time on TV had some positives, I'm sure. His family's record label got more experience exposure and really I always wondered what would have happened if he would have won it all would he have been signed with both labels I guess since nobody ever ended up signing a contract anyway it wouldn't have really matter but after the show Richie did a lot of press runs and appearing at a lot of radio stations and even did some concerts even traveling over the water to the US Virgin Islands where he would perform there as well even becoming the brand ambassador for his hometown NBA team the Charlotte Hornets and their G League subsidiary the Swarm Richie also also became a published author for multiple books around this time. A children's book called Big Bro Big Shoes, which gave inspiration to the youth, trying to show it was cool to be a positive influence, and another motivational book called The Know That Meant Go Harder, showing that his time on TV was an opportunity that he was trying to take advantage of and use to uplift others. He's currently still putting out music, and even is teaming back up with his brothers to make some music as well. It's still seeming to be a family affair, and Richie and his music style seems to be growing with them. The rap game in conclusion was never going to produce 20 plus rap stars. If anything it's a testament to JD and the platform that they were able to find all these talented kids from various situations whose collective personalities made the show a hit. There are only a handful of rappers that stay hot long enough to still be relevant years later. But years after the show, because so many related to the cast and grew up with them, it seemed to create a sort of parasocial relationship that sometimes is for the good and the bad. The amount of people these kids influenced to entertain, the business moves, music, and charity provided from each kid and their team from the show is amazing. And the ability to maybe not be the richest or most successful, but have an ability to change their life circumstances by expanding their platforms that they were already building ended up being priceless. Even if Jermaine Dupri didn't turn any of these rappers into superstars, everyone has steered their lives in directions that they wanted to. It's hard to really compare success or failures. Life will always have ups and downs, but from seeing the child Lotto on the show grinding with their father, to now hearing Sunday service every time I turn on the radio, to go from seeing Flage being told as a child that she didn't have breath control, to now seeing her win a championship at LSU, and then still have enough breath control to continue making music at the same time, where now she's in the studio with that same Jermaine Dupree, and so many other countless stories that we went over through these videos, is definitely motivating for anybody that's trying to achieve a dream and that's not to discredit those who also found peace living their life and being more low-key after tasting fame or those who are going through adult life getting married or having children nothing in life is always perfect but it's always what we make of it and a lot of fans seem to lose sight that these were just kids that followed their dreams and tried to make their opportunity count if you stuck around to the end of this video I appreciate you a real one and this rap game series has definitely been one that I'll 
appreciate it so every person that's made a view shared a video liked the video commented anything any support just shout out to y'all for real but like always this your boy stone astro and we out of here man so go ahead and drop that outro ever since i felt for you uh. I done said a lot of things that I can't take you back And if you wanna know the truth uh, There's a lot of good things that I know I like, like I can't talk to you, I can't tell you the truth Yeah, I can't seem to control my emotions Yeah, my emotions